Hey there guys and gals, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, on my back here, I have a product which most of you have not seen before and most soldiers in the United States Army have not seen as well. But, this is a product which you will see more of and so will they. This is the United States Army Molly 4000 pack and we are going to take a look at it now. So this is it, this is the Molly 4000 pack. You may be wondering where does the 4000 come from? This offers you 4000 cubic inches of space which is roughly 65 liters. Hence, Molly 4000. Now Molly stands for Modular Lightweight Load Carrying Equipment. Before we take a look at this pack, let's talk about how I came into possession of it because this pack is without a doubt a rarity. In fact, right now it is in the testing phase with the United States Army. A few weeks back, a viewer wrote and he said that he saw this backpack mentioned in a magazine, some sort of military magazine or something or other, and he had asked if I had any information about it. After talking with him, I reached out to some of my military buddies to see if they had any information about this. Most of them did not, but I had two who had hands-on experience with this pack. And basically what they said was that there had been multiple versions of this pack. This version right here is the latest edition. This is going into field testing this year. In fact, it should be in testing right now with the 82nd and other divisions on a larger scale will be coming later. This pack was mainly made for airborne units, but it was designed so it can be used in other areas with other soldiers and so on. This pack shares a lot of characteristics with the Molly 2, also the FILBE pack. Think of this as the next generation. This has been upgraded in many, many ways while using many of the same components such as the frame. This comes from the FILBE pack, but it has been upgraded. It has been reinforced, so it's much stronger and much more impact resistant. The waist belt here, this is from the Molly 2. So with all that being said, let's take a look at this pack now. Starting here at the top, you have a reinforced drag handle. This is a very, very large grab handle. Look at the size of this thing. I don't remember specifically if the Molly 2 or if the FILBE had such a large grab handle, but this one certainly does. You have a zipper right here, two-way. This gives you access to the contents of your pack so you can run hoses and antennas through here. Going down onto the lid here, as you can see, you have the straps running up. There's tons and tons of slack here, so you can attach extra gear to the front. You have PALS webbing here, so you can attach pouches and so on. ITW Nexus buckles. Up here at the top, honestly, I'm not really sure what these are for. They have snaps, so you can slide something through and it can come through the top. What that is used for, I'm not really sure. I'm sure some of my army buddies can tell me. Pulling the lid back, you do have a Velcro map pocket, which encompasses the entire lid. With the lid pulled back, exposing the front, you have three rows of PALS webbing. Up here at the top, you have a draw pool actually two of those. One, and then the expansion for the lid. What you can see here, this pack does expand quite a bit. Moving down, you have a very large size front pocket, YKK zippers, two-way, has a protective flap that goes over the zipper, and inside of this, this is just a ton of space. There are no dividers, no sleeves, nothing like that. You do have a drainage hole at the bottom. You can see that you have four rows of PALS webbing right here, so you can attach more pouches and so on. Going down to the bottom of the pack, you can see here that you have a zippered pocket with nothing else on the bottom, no compression straps, nothing like that. Now inside of here, we have all sorts of straps and whatnot because this is an airborne pack. You have two loops here and nothing else. There are three drainage holes in this bottom pocket and this is fairly small. You may be able to fit a small summertime sleeping bag inside of this. Definitely your woobie blanket, no doubt. What this is, is a single point release harness for airborne troops. And this pocket here is meant for that harness. Now let's take a look at the suspension system and so on. So here with the harness, this is very wide, at least three inches or so, about an inch in thickness, very padded, not very hard. This is actually comfortable. Imagine that. You have a sternum strap, straps up here to attach more gear. You have the waist belt, as mentioned before, was taken from the Molly 2. As you can see, this is fully adjustable. You could stow the straps. The buckle here, very good quality, very strong 
To adjust the waist belt, you will notice right here on each end of the buckle, you have these springed levers which you can push in. You push these in to make adjustments. Behind the harness, you have a large section of air mesh, padded, fairly thick. This offers you a good divide from the pack itself so you can get some airflow back here to wake away some moisture. On the belt itself, you do have more webbing so you can attach additional pouches and so on. Now let's flip the pack over to its side. You have two compression straps with strap keepers. It should be mentioned that all of the straps on this pack have strap keepers. You have tons of webbing here so you can attach all sorts of pouches, whatever you want. On both sides of the pack, you do have these snaps. And this does give you access to the inside of the pack. So you can route hoses, antennas, wires, whatever you need to out of the pack here. The other side of the pack is exactly the same with the compression straps, the webbing, and so on. The inside of this pack is very simple. Essentially, there's nothing to it. This is just a large size ruck. Now with the Molly 4000 pack, this was designed so it could go from a jump pack to a filled pack, just like that, in about one minute. This thing can be rigged up to jump in literally one minute, and then it can be removed in that same frame of time. That is one of the main purposes for this pack here. The next one would be comfort. This pack was actually designed with comfort and weight management in mind. Instead of having the weight on your shoulders, the weight is actually transferred to the hips where it should be. Because this pack is so adaptable, it can be used in all sorts of different units. In other words, this pack was designed so it can be used by a wider range of soldier and tailored for the operation at hand. Now we might as well go over the stats concerning this pack before wrapping up this video. This features the multi-cam camo pattern. Now previous versions of this pack actually featured the ACU camo pattern. It does feature quick release buckles. From what I understand, it is made from 500D Kodora, which is water repellent. And this pack was designed around a rib configuration, which allows the frame to flex around the user's body. This assists with load bearing comfort, increases the range of motion of the soldier. This pack was designed to be impact resistant up to 32 feet per second. Now, as far as testing goes, as mentioned before, roughly 6,000 members of the 82nd Airborne will be using this pack later on this year, along with a large conventional force as well. So guys, that pretty much wraps it up for the Molly 4000 pack. This is the very first look of this pack. From what I understand, this is the first time that it has been seen on YouTube. Now in the future, if you guys want, we can do a versus episode. This pack against the FILBE or even the Molly 2. It's completely up to you all. Let me know what you guys think about this pack, what you guys want me to do with it into the future. I'm thinking military surplus overnight adventure. What do you guys think? Everybody, thank you very much for tuning in for this episode, Strength and Honor. Thank you very much to the viewers for all your help in getting this pack in and for letting me know about it. See you guys.